Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> precious hashtag killer pitch master Williams is about to come on and just like rock your world. This, this woman is doing some amazing things in the world of pitching, of entrepreneurship. Like, oh my gosh, epic, epic, epic. Before we dive into that, I just want to celebrate you. It is New Year's. Happy New Year. I hope you're making it your best year ever, and I hope you're creating your greatest possible self, your best life, your best, best, best life ever. Just know I'm here for you to support you with all these epic guests. If you have any questions, want support, guidance on becoming your GPS, let me know. I am here for you. Stay plugged in to the sources of inspiration, of empowerment that help you become your GPS. Keep it up. Next up is the iTunes review of the week. This week, let's see who it's by. I believe it is by uh, Merit. Pete and Merritt, that's who it's by. Awesome. Fantastic content from experts about what it really takes to live a full, passionate, and purpose-driven life. Thank you, Chris, for all this fabulous work. Pete and Merritt, thank you so much for that review. If you want to give us a review, get a chance to get shouted out on a future 12-hour live stream, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search Greatest Possible Self on the Apple Podcast Store, and you can give us a review there. Thank you in advance for doing that. Let us know what you love, what you want to see more of, and how we can improve the show for you. I'm going to introduce Precious in just a second here. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes. This is going to amp up your pitch so that you can absolutely crush it when sharing about yourself, your services, your vision, anything that's important to you. You're going to be able to pitch it like a freaking pro. All right, let's introduce Precious, and then we'll bring her on the screen. Have you ever met a full-figured diva who has taken the business world by storm and won big? Well, now you have Precious L. Williams, also affectionately known as the hashtag killer pitch master, can help you hashtag slay all competition with her killer elevator pitches, media pitches, and investor pitches. Precious is a world-class master communicator who works with successful women entrepreneurs and helps them take their professional pitching and speaking skills to the next level. With over 24 years of experience in creating unique branding, speaking, and marketing techniques, Williams trains her clients and sales teams at Fortune 100 companies how to remain authentic and transparent when presenting to distinctive audiences. As a 13-time National Business Elevator Pitch Champion, Williams has has been on top television shows and publications for her pitching, branding, and professional speaking skills. She was featured on season eight of ABC's Shark Tank, CNN, MSNBC, Wall Street Journal, the movie Leap, as well as several others around the world. And I just want to get some hearts. I want to get some thumbs up out there in the audience for Precious because she's about to come on and rock your world. Precious, are you ready to just like, just take this next level? Are you ready to ignite in this 2020? Oh my, oh my gosh. We are, we are live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Precious, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to dive right into the theme of today, which is 2020, new year, new decade. Precious, what does that mean for you? New year, new decade means actually being intentional and having audacity this year. I know that it looks like I've done a lot of big things, but that's what I did at a certain level. Mm -hmm. And now I'm about to tear the roof off of what I'm about to do. So when I tell you this year is about shock and awe, say it again, hashtag shock and awe. Hashtag I'm about shock to and awe. <laughs> what I'm about to do. I know it comes from way, way back in the 90s. Under I love it. Shock and awe. <laughs> That is exactly what I'm going to do this year. Mm. That's exactly what my clients are going to do this year. It is, when I say audacity, I mean the audacity to ask for what you want, the audacity to hear the reaction, the audacity to stand in your power, the audacity to charge what you're worth and what value you bring to the table. Intention, meaning going after what it is with nothing, nothing less than extreme focus, wow. not being distracted by this and that that distracts normal everyday people. We're not average. We're not random. We're not ordinary. We are extraordinary beings. And I am the hashtag killer pitch master. I will help you hashtag slay all competition. And that's what I do each and every day of my life. For the last few days, I was feeling a little down because, you know, the holidays aren't the best time for me. But when I tell you I woke up this morning, I woke up at three o'clock this morning. It's funny. You were starting at three o'clock. My time, I would say, yes. my time. And I woke up with this, This I, I started praying. I started listening to uh, motivational, like I was listening to Denzel Washington's uh, speech from a commencement. And I was like, you know what? Oh no, it's about to be on. I'm 41 this month. And I know the doll is about to be 41. <laughs> and I am so excited because this wow. month kicks off the rest of the year. Wow. I had some stumbles towards the end of the year. 
and it means nothing now. Mm. We're in a new decade, new mm. years, one, one, twenty. Mm. What it means is fuel for the fire. It, it means is like I, I'm, I, I'm ready to ignite even more precious. Like your fire is. Just, it, oh my gosh, it is. It is everything. <laughs> it is about my energy. So thank you. It is. It is everything. So I love it. I shared about your your uh, service that you provide for people, like the 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 pitch mastering, slaying all competition, being able to crush it when presenting oneself, their business, their offer. In your own words, I just want to hear what is what is a pitch and like how do you serve your clients in mastering that? Okay. So a pitch is a short, brief way of introducing yourself, your your business, your books, your brands, your products and your services in such a way that you invite a second conversation from the mm. other from the audience's perspective, not mm. something that you want to do, but they are delighted to hear what you have to say. So it's not giving away your entire secret sauce, but you're piquing their interest in them wanting to be like, hmm, I'd like to learn more. I'd like to have a conversation with you. I'd like to have a meeting with you. So you're truly introducing the best part of what it is that you do mm. and you're answering a pain point that most people are struggling with. Mm. For example, when it comes to pitching, most people can't even get to pitching unless they get past having the confidence to speak well. Yep. And a lot of people, what's their number one fear? Death and public, public speaking. speaking. <laughs> I've been a professional speaker this year. When it when January 22nd happens, I will have been a professional speaker for 25 years. Wow. And I cannot believe wow. I've been doing this since I was 16 years old. Wow. So what I teach is hashtag rockstar confidence that from no matter from the time you start creating your pitches to the time you hit that stage to the time that you're in front of a prospect to the time that you're getting you're getting mentally prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Not only that, what is your unique selling point? What mm-hmm. is your unique selling proposition? Or as great Danielle Jervie says, what is your unique value proposition? What do you bring to the table that no one else can bring? Mm. And as everybody, as some some people who've ever met me who are watching this today, I'm a 13-time national elevator pitch champion, which means I've faced off against the best in the world and won 13 out of 14 times. I didn't do it talking about tech. I didn't do it talking about, you know, the latest gadget. I did it talking about lingerie for full-figure divas and plus-size fashionistas yes. when I was 327 pounds. So when I tell you, I'm not talking about something I don't know about. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about something I do. I know it's like to stand in your own, for lack of better term, stand in your own, like, S-H-I-T, right? And just be like, I am the (laughs) best at this. When I walked on that stage, all my competitors, and they laughed at me, and they said, oh, she's fat. She's going to talk about food. I was like, Mm -hmm. watch this. Watch this. And I went in and I said, first of all, when you're tell, you have to tell a story and I don't want to, I don't want this to all relate to just a story, but you definitely have to talk in such a way that you're an engaging personality. Mm -hmm. If what you're doing is going to networking events and handing people your business card and saying, just go to my website and stuff like that, you've lost the conversation. Make it where you're interested in them. I'm telling you, since I know most people are afraid of public speaking and pitching, most people don't know how to just have a conversation about what it is that they do. And it's not the time to say, hi, my name is Precious Williams. I am the founder of Perfect Pieces by Precious. But what if I came to you and said, ladies, ladies, raise your hands if you want to be a bad bitch with a power pitch. Mm. And, you know, most people are just like, whoa. Because what you're doing is you're interrupting the pattern. The pattern is everyone just tells who they are and what they do. I'm not going to talk about what it is that I do. I'm going to talk about how I can transform your life. And if you want to be a bad bitch with a power pitch and you know you're not at this point, Mm. you're like, okay, I'm I'm rocking with that. First of all, it's shocking. And that's what you want to do. You want to kind of. You want to kind of get people in the in the in the mode of she's not normal. She's not wow. going to give me the average random or ordinary. Mm. She's going to come at me with a totally different mindset. Yeah. And so again, um, I know we're going to go over some other tips, but I just want you to know that an elevator pitch is what I do, and I want to make sure that you attract your target market, your clients, your prospects, your customers. You want to attract those people to you. And the only way you can do that is if you authentically and transparently give them the best of what you got. Precious, you are you're just on fire. Your your eloquence. I feel like you you could be a poet. You could be a rapper. You could be like a. I uh, am a poet. A, <laughs> <laughs> right, I, listen, if Drake, give me a shot. Give me a shot, Drake. Give me a shot. <laughs> Your, your lyrics, rap, your, your, but I, your, I can write bars. It is, it is beautiful. Your, your lyrics, your eloquence, your word choice is so 
powerful and on point. I love it. I think it is just, it speaks to the 25 years of experience that you've had practicing with your words. And now you've, you've used so many words and leveraged so many words and created beautiful pictures of so many words that now you get to help other people to do that as well. When they have struggles finding the words, being able to paint their picture that they're trying to paint in someone's mind of what the story is, what the pain point is. So I really love, I love what you're doing. I want to go back into your journey, Precious, and talk about right. what, what got you started in pitching? What got you started in saying, hey, I want to be great at, at sales. I want to be great at being someone who helps companies succeed. Like, where did that all begin for you? It all began... Yeah, let me let me give it to you raw. So I was I, I was in a, I had a seven year relationship with a with a great man and it ended abruptly. And I started dating a very famous Hollywood actor. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you I was a big girl at the time. Mm -hmm. And so everybody kept thinking there's no way they're together. But the way he used to make me feel about myself was incredible. I mm -hmm. felt like Beyonce for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. Before that, I felt like Kelly and Michelle. And there's no disrespect to them at all. But what I am saying is I never felt like the the full person. I felt like a funny fat girl. And so I, the more I got to thinking about it, and I was an attorney at the time, uh -huh. I didn't want to be an attorney. I wanted to actually become an, an entrepreneur and not for myself, but to transform how curvy women feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm in a red hot relationship with someone no one believes, imagine what other women like me are actually going through. They're wanted, they're appreciated, they matter. They are that Beyonce's. So I told my friend, we were actually sitting down and she said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to start Curvy Girls Lingerie. And she's like, what? And I remember, it's like the earth shook. She's like, first of all, you don't have a design background. I said, uh-huh. She said, you don't have the, and I said, I understand that I don't have all of those sort of things, but mm -hmm. God revealed to me that Curvy Girls Lingerie is the ultimate shopping experience for full figure divas and yes. plus size fashionistas. And she was like, what? <laughs> and so I had negative four hundred dollars in my bank account. I and I, I God told me I was going to be on television. Now, mind you, I had no money, and He told me you're going to be on television. So I borrowed, uh, you know, I got three hundred dollars to put on a credit card to be at this small business awards. And CNBC and MSNBC were in the room. So when I tell you, I walked up to the producers at MSNBC with a company that was not real, but only in my mind. I pitched it and didn't know what an elevator pitch was. And they were like, you should be on the show Elevator Pitch. And I'm like, <laughs> what? So they were bringing me the host and she got called to be on stage. So they brought me her booking producer. Her booking producer says, give me your elevator pitch. I had no idea what that meant. But I felt like hey, from your lips to God's ears, it's going down. So I started going in. And she's like, stop. You can be on the show. And I'm thinking, are you serious? Like, if, I, if you only knew the tears behind my eyes and I had on glasses so she couldn't see. She says, can you give me your business card? I didn't have money for business cards. So I told her, I've been here all night. I ran out of cards. And I was like, Lord, that's the, the killer pitch master was born. So I got home. Don't know how I got home because I didn't have any money. But then I went to, uh, we were going back and forth. She says, where's your, where's your website? And I said, oh, we're going through a rebranding process. We didn't have a website. That's really what it came <laughs> So we put together a website. They came and picked me up in a Cadillac Escalade, took me to 30 Rock. Yes, Rockefeller Center. Yes. And I remember going in and being so like the, the all the anchors from the from the weekend were there. And they were like, we want to hear you speak. And I'm thinking, my friends don't believe this is happening. That's why I'm emotional now. My friends couldn't even believe that I had done it. And I was like, and when I went to pitch in front of all of these people, I pitched as if I was pitching before. God. And I was like, this is my only moment. I may not ever get a moment like this. And I heard Naz's song, All I Need Is One Mic, One mm. Mic. And so when I did it, I went deaf right afterwards. And I didn't hear her say that was one of the best pitches in the history of the show. And it was ranked as number one of the five, in the five best in the history of the show. Mm. Mind you, I'd never been taught to do an elevator pitch. After that, I went and I started entering myself into the pitch competitions and I won 13 out of 14. And people kept asking me to teach them what it is that I do so well. I didn't think I could because I'm like, this is natural. I've been doing this a lot. You know, like pitching and public speaking are similar, but they're not the same. The mm. time limit is not the same. Right. And so doing it and getting it right, I raised enough money to start my company. Mm. We got on Shark Tank. We got on all of these amazing shows. And people could not believe that this little fat girl out of St. Louis, Missouri, that nobody wanted is sitting here in New York City, flying out to LAX 
to pitch on Shark Tank, Dang. you get there's no greater story than that. There's no greater story than that story. So I became a bad bitch with a power pitch. <laughs> I love it. I love how you said, you know, you're were, you were pitching as if it was like your one moment. And like, I think people and have that these, moment it really was. Yeah. And, and people have these small moments, though, that they take for granted and like don't make the most out of it because they're like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's not a big deal or it's not like my one moment. And like, it really was yours. But I think it was a mindset that you developed that allowed you to get there. Because in my opinion, you had to practice like, hey, if this was all that I had, if this was my last conversation on earth, like how would I leave this conversation? How would I leave feeling? Did I did I make the sale? Did I do my best? Did I show up and give everything I've got to it? And I think that's a muscle that had to be developed that allowed you to kind of be worthy of that stage on Shark Tank, on on the shows and be able to win these 13 freaking awards, which is which is incredible. I think it's it's so powerful. And um, is there anything else that you would recommend as far as your growth process or what it took to be able to do that like the first time? I think the first, the first thing is having testicular fortitude and having rock star confidence. I have, when I look back over my life, I think of all the times that people counted me out. Mm -hmm. I think of all the times that people said, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. I think about all the times I had no money. Mm -hmm. I think about all the times I had no connections. I think about all the times that I just struggled mm -hmm. and I kept going because first of all, God, God had the, the, his foot in my back. <laughs> and also because there is a, I have a greater purpose yeah. and it really is to show people what is truly possible. Even at the most down moments, I know I have purpose mm -hmm. and my purpose is not about me. Everything I've ever gone through from homelessness to, to addiction, severe alcohol addiction, to um, being abandoned and rejected and dismissed and kicked to mm -hmm. the curb. I'm telling you, prepared me for these moments. So if you think being on television is hard, I would say to you, homelessness is worse. Oh, my I would say homelessness is worse. Yeah. So if you get the opportunity to kill it, you know what I did? I woke up this morning and I started approaching different producers of different t television shows. And you're probably like, how would you do that? Because I believe in myself and I have the power of the pitch. Yeah. I'm a bad bitch with a power of pitch. And I already started getting people reaching back out to me. And I thought to myself, if I don't believe in myself, mm. I don't know how everybody else has believed in me if I didn't believe in myself. If I can't show you that I got on Forbes magazine without asking for it, without paying for it, mm. if they didn't reach back to say, we want to publish your next book. If I want to give a shout out to people who've been here along the journey from Ty Goodwin to Sharon Monet, to all of these great people, to the producers under Sean Hill, like all of these great people who have been here for me to Tori, to Kiana, like there's so many people, Wendy Y. Bentley, there's so many people I could thank who were with me when I struggled and didn't think I'd ever cross the stage again. And they cared enough about me. You know, Ivy, Ivy, Ivy uh, Ingrid Vanderbilt, like all of these people, you were there when I had nothing mm. and you believed in me. So getting on sh TV shows, that's not a problem. Being homeless is a problem. Man. Oh, oh, Being precious. an addict is a problem. This is, this is, this is spicy. This is fire. This is so powerful. I know it's hitting me like in the heart, like your conviction you developed that conviction, that survival instinct for someone out there who doesn't necessarily have that, that tenacity, that grit, that perseverance, because you went through those, those difficult down moments, those rock bottom moments. How do you encourage your clients to develop that themselves? I encourage my clients to develop that grit and that determination by one, looking to what they've done in the past and how God has been there for them, but mm. also taking extreme action mm. and that means taking like you know how people say the journey of a thousand steps begins with one that's true yep. but sometimes it means taking that that scary step you've been afraid to take yep. so a lot of people are afraid to get on linkedin and mm. actually go after who they really want they think mm. i'm not perfect i'm not this women i'm not skinny enough i'm not blonde enough i'm not mm. tall enough i'm not this but if i was doing this at 327 pounds as a little fat girl with a mohawk I went into court as an attorney with a mohawk and a hot pink suit. I deserve to be tossed out on the street. You know what? That, that tells you about audacity. And I want you to believe that you can actually do it. Mm. I, when, I, when I talk, when I thought about Shark Tank, it's not that I, I said to myself, oh, one day I'll be there. It was like, God said, it, it's done. Yeah. And it was just a matter of, I want them to come this way. Mm. I don't want to apply. I want them to come for me. Mm. And I went in, in, 
that deals with mindset mastery. And sometimes I, I battle with it myself, but it is a mindset thing. What is it that you really want? And let's really move towards it. Do you have everything in place? Let's say you don't and keep moving. I didn't have business cards. That stopped me from being on television. I didn't even have a freaking real business and I got on real television. So you don't have to be perfect to start. You just have to start. That's right. And it is so true. And I'm talking to myself right now because I tell you, I was going through it. And just knowing to having the right people, bring like all the right people in my you, you know, reaching out and listen, this is this is this is a divine moment. This is divine mm-hmm. intervention. This is divine purpose. Mm-hmm. I was meant to be on this stage to do this. I was meant to be right here with you in this moment. And when I tell you it does require grit, because you're gonna go through some things. If you think it's gonna be an easy road, I promise you it won't. I may not be 327 pounds. I might be 230 now. <laughs> but that people may look at me differently. Like, oh, okay. I wear wigs every day. I change it up like I change my underwear. It's a real <laughs> thing in these streets. It's a real thing in these streets. Like, because I want to be different. And I tell people to embrace their different. Mm. You don't have to be perfect. Like, you're bald, right? Yep. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You look good <laughs> in these streets. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Show yep. up show up with your best self, yeah. but your best self doesn't have to be the perfect self. It has to be your real self. Yeah. And I think the big thing is we can get attached to what we think we're supposed to look like, sound like, be like, whatever, but just say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm good enough as I am. Like I'm here. I, I like believe in a, a master creator, God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it. Like yeah. put your faith in that higher power. Sounds like you did as well. You pitched to God. You know, you said, "Hey, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it to the highest power and say, like, just let me be the best blessing that I can be in this pitch, in this present moment, and deliver what I'm here to deliver, my greatest gifts." You did that with the the shows and in your pitches. Now you're serving people in doing that, helping them to do that as well. So I want to dive into just what does it take to craft a masterful pitch? And there's lots of different places that people can pitch in, whether it's an emails trying to get, you know, media exposure, whether it's in a sales um, presentation, where do you start with people? And I know there's a lot of different ways we can go with pitching, but where do you start? So I start right where they are, right? So let's start with your overall major goal. And then we start to work backwards and it's not a perfect linear backwards, but like, what is it that you really, really want to do? So we start with, you know, making sure that your 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 story is together. And it could be your origin story. It could be, you know, how you knew you were going to make it. Or mm. for me, how to, how one red hot relationship turned into a beautiful business for the over 40 million women size fortune or larger in the United States, just like me. And we all want pretty underwear. <laughs> companies don't create it. So you have to talk about the need. What is the need? What is the actual pain point out there? How big is the market? How do you, when you're talking to a product, like, so we're going over your story. We're also thinking about, you know, what is a great way to intro yourself? Yeah. And that doesn't begin with, hi, my name is such and such. Because all of that doesn't really matter. You can say that at the end. You can thank them for their time. You can say that for the end. Hmm. But what can you say that interrupts their pattern? So let's say you're a financial advisor. I met a man who's totally blew my mind as a financial advisor. You know what he said to me when he met me? He said, hello. He said, hello, I'm such and such. And I'm a firefighter. And I was like, (laughs) what? He he wasn't built like one. He wasn't, you know, like, and I was just kind of like, okay. And he said he puts out family fires. And then, Mm -hmm. but when he said firefighter, it intrigued me. Wow. It made me feel some type of way. Wow. It made me feel, hold on just a second. I need to, I'm just going to plug in my phone. Hold on just one yeah, second. Yeah. Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> you know how you, you get into your moments and then your phone says, hold up, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. This is too hot. <laughs> it is. And then he, but he intrigued me because when he talked about being a firefighter and putting out family fires mm. that was a unique way of talking about financial advising wow so what can you do that really stands out and really it interrupts the pattern right mm. how can you do that you want to begin with the end in mind what is your overall goal and i say this all the time and people think i'm just you know re- re- reciting the same things and i'm like because repetition is what's going to go into your mind yeah if i just come up with different tips all the time that does not work mm. And you want to get to the point where you are truly addressing the need, the real need. So like for me, public speaking, for, for somebody else, it might be, 
that they may need insurance. For some other people, it might be you're a graphic designer, mm -hmm. uh, a graphic designer, you're you're this, you're that. What is it most people, most people can't design. I can, I'm here to tell you, I can't design. People come to me, I'm like, please don't, please, please. <laughs> Don't do me like that. I am a master of words. I'm a world-class master communicator. Yeah. What can you say that really helps you stand out in a major way? Mm. So what we do is we work on those sort of things. We work on the pain points. We work on how you interrupt the pattern. We work on ways to stand out. We work on ways to really attract your, your target market by speaking to them at their level. Yep. So when I say a bad bitch with a power pitch, I, I'm you're probably wondering, do I even do that in corporate state, cor corporate uh, corporate uh, events? Yes, yeah. I do. I do. <laughs> I do it in a different way, but I do. And anybody who's ever been with me at corporate events are just kind of like, wow, that's a bad one right there. <laughs> not great. I want you to be unapologetic about what it is you're going after. Yep. And so when I was up this morning, or for the, or some other mornings, and I was approaching booking producers. I, I sent them my Forbes article that with a Forbes article was titled Pitching is Bitching. If Forbes can read this book, read my book, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches for Women Entrepreneurs and Speakers <laughs> Only, then it can get into a corporate setting and it sets me apart. So we're going to look for ways to set you apart in the marketplace. Mm. We're going to look for ways that help you stand out and not just standing out for some BS reason, but standing out because you are truly the best in the world at what it is that you do. Shout out to Danielle Jervy. Shout out. Mm, mm, and then I we want you to start it. off with the bang and end with fireworks. So I want you from the time they, they listen to you and this can happen in a conversation. You don't have to stand up and be like, ah, ah. <laughs> no, you can do it in a conversation, but you want to <laughs> end. You want to start off with a bang and end with fireworks. Shout out to Cheryl Wood. Wow. I love it. I, I think it's so, so important. You said that as well, because it's not about being loud. It's about what no. you're saying. It's about the essence, the energy, the spirit of what you're saying. And like, I, I'm a firefighter. He doesn't even have to say it loud. You can whisper it. Hey, I'm a firefighter. Yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> like you? Hey, right? you? <laughs> it didn't look built like one. I was like, okay, you know, I, I'm interested. I want to be down with the click. <laughs> So it's I like when you when when someone hears that you want to catch them off guard to be able to do that authentically without having to yell and scream and say this is who I am and be like like a clown no you go back to that origin story and you look at who am I really and what is the element that is so true to me that hits so close home to me and what I'm about and who I'm here to be the stand that I am for people that I can translate into a message and communicate yes. at the drop of a hat. Yes. It's very important that you know who you are and you, you know, your message and your message doesn't have to be the static thing, but mm. you definitely want it to be in such a way that it truly, truly stands out. And that's why I bring up the firefighter all the time because I will never forget that as long as I live. Oh my gosh. So it's the, the origin story, it's the pain points, and then it's, it's the being beginning to... with the end in mind, knowing what your goal, knowing what your overall goal is, yeah. knowing what their pain points are, speaking to at least one of those pain points. Hmm. And then once you have the the kind of raw ingredients, obviously they, they can have a conversation with you, Precious, and you can expedite them through the process like like that. What what would you say is the overall what you do, how you piece that together? Is that like a, a, a secret recipe that you do or is there a way you approach it? It's like a secret recipe. Again, I teach the art and science of the killer elevator pitch, media pitch, investor pitch, and speaker yeah. pitch. So yes, I do have my own secret sauce. I don't specifically, I don't specifically tell you this is how it is done. Mm -hmm. I do it mm -hmm. because one of the things you have to be very aware, like there are some people who will you know, piecemeal everything and shout out to Brandon, um, who who don't shout, who don't piecemeal everything, but want you to learn the process. Mm -hmm. For me, I love writing pitches. I swear mm -hmm. to you, I love it. Like I was up so four thirty this morning. I was working on three different pitches, and I'm thinking, I really love this. I'm going <laughs> hard in the paint. I'm going hard. Yes, I'm loving this. Yes. This is my life here, and I love it. Mm -hmm. I love so it. yeah, I do have my own secret sauce, my own way of arranging it. So it's. It's, it's right. And when it feels right, that's only when I send it off to them. And then yeah. we work on practicing it, yep. you know, making sure they're doing it in a mirror, making sure that they're going to coffee shops and testing it out on disinterested audiences. Yes. You can't just be in front of your family. Talking <laughs> about something. It's my pitch. My pitch, the killer pitch master wrote it for me. You know, I'm seeing I'm just going to go. I'm going to say it. No, 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 no. <laughs> you practice on disinterested people because your family going to be like, dope. That's dope. That's great. And you're like, 
You didn't learn anything. Your family's going to think everything you do is great. Yeah. Test it out on different people. Let's see if we have to change something up. But it has to come in your words and it has to come out of your mouth beautifully because you have to embody it. Wow. So with the, the pitch, I know it can be in terms of making a sale. It could be to open up a conversation at like a networking event. It could be to an investor. It could be to, to media. Like what what further can people do with that pitch? Like is that something that you just keep rinsing and repeating? You get better and better at? Well, you have to growing? remember different types of pitch. They're different sure. levels of pitches, right? So it, something you do in 30 seconds is different from what you're going to say in 90 seconds. Right. What you, you, can, you can take the elements of a pitch and stretch it contract it mm -hmm. but how i speak to the media is very different from how i speak to oh, yeah. at a networking event right? Right, right so different audiences require different things mm -hmm. when i do a keynote it's very different from if i do a breakout which mm -hmm. is very different if i do a, a, a workshop which is very different from how i do a session they're they're different they can c carry similar elements Got but it. trust me you can't I, the way i speak at Morgan Stanley or at Google is not how I'm going to speak to my neighborhood home girl who needs pitching help. <laughs> I promise you it's not the same. It's not the same. I love it. I love it. Um, so this is, this is important because people might need help in these different areas. Is there, is there a type of pitch that you love to work on most, most or a type of, uh, you know, that I love elevator pitches and I love <laughs> investor pitches and speaker pitches. So in that order, elevator pitches, uh, media and speaker. I love mm. those the most. I don't have a problem with investor pitches. They're just usually, they, they entail so much more. Yeah. And so that, that requires me to work with you longer. You right. know what I mean? But when it comes to those, man, I know I'm batting a thousand. I right, listen, let's go kill it today. Let's kill it. <laughs> let's kill it. And, and did you put like everything that you learned in your book? What did you, why did, when, when did you decide to write your book? Well, See, the book has been in my mind for three years, wow. three long years. Wow. And uh, to shout out to Sharon Monet Penn Legacy. She wrote about me when she worked at CNN and I was, I was the CNN's Entrepreneur of the Month for June 2015. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was looking for a book coach because I could not figure out how to start this book. Mm -hmm. And the title, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches, had been in my mind. Mm -hmm. People tried to talk me out of it. And something kept saying, I got to do it. I got to do it. <laughs> and she's the only one who said, Yes. And she said, you need to do it now. She said, because somebody else is going to write your book in six Dang. months. And I was Dang. like, oh, she said, you got two and a half months. What? Yo, she was, uh, like, this is a little spitfire. I was scared <laughs> not to turn in work. I was scared. I was scared for my life. Like, <laughs> I don't turn in something. You know, I, she might fight me in the streets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't want that. So, you know, we worked on the outline. And then once we had the outline, I started writing and it flowed. Yeah. And when something wasn't right, you know, she was only like white on rice. Like, I'm precious. Like, I thought, man, I thought my intro was so dope. I was like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> she was like, um, no. I was like, hold up, hold up. That's some good work. She said, for who? Ooh. <laughs> Shout out to Sharon Monet. She, and she laughs because she, cause she knows she's not a game. She is mm. so not a game. That's why I rocks with her. I, I, it's, it's young people say I eps with her. Yeah. I, I, I rock. You know what I'm saying? I, I rocks with her. You know, I eps with her. I eps with the whole Penn Legacy family. And so when she was going in on me, it just made it better. And so did I put everything I know in this book? Come on now. Let's be clear. <laughs> Could this really encapsulate what I've learned in 25 years of speaking and, and being a killer pitch master since 2011? Oh, no. This is just the first in the series. This is the branding bitches. Man. The Seven different personalities that one, one a woman usually is to really get out there, right? Yeah. So this helps you prepare to start pitching, but there's more to the table in that. Let's get real clear. There's more <laughs> to the table in that. In fact, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches Part Two is coming out this year. Ooh, mine. Just like I have in my mind, the Curvy Girls Guide to Living Well in a Crazy World, and I also have the most popular girl in the psych ward. Yeah, there's just so much <laughs> in it, right? Yeah, you can be popular in the psych ward. Every psych ward I've ever been in, I've been the most popular. And trust me, I didn't have to sleep my way to do it. Like, I was just popular. Oh my gosh. I, I love yeah, that. You think you're... I'm popular now. You don't know what a, a psych ward is like with me. <laughs> oh, don't. So your your audacity, going back to like what we started this interview with, your audacity, your your vision, 
how do people cultivate that within themselves? Because like, I think it's easy to say, well, I'm going to go after this goal. I'm going to hit six figures. I'm going to hit seven figures. I'm going to get a house. I'm going to find the man or woman of my dreams. But you're like, I'm out to impact the world. I'm out to like build this freaking legacy, this empire. Where, where does that come from? How do you, how do you translate that to people? How do you transfer that to people? Well, I think one of the great things that I've learned in this game as an entrepreneur, anything else, is you need to have someone to hold your foot to the fire. Mm. You need yep. someone to hold your foot to the fire. That's why I have Ty Goodwin. That's why I have Brandon. Um, that's why, you know, I have someone like a Sean Hill, a Sharon Monet, um, Coach Wendy White. Like, there's so many people who've been a part of holding my feet to the fire. Yep. Um, Kimberly Manning. Like, these people, like, don't let me get the tripping. Because they'll get tripping with me, you know, and, and I love that because I don't have, I have some yes people. These ain't those yes people. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm going to do something, shout out to Darnielle Jervy. Um, you know, just if I have this and they'll be all in my butt, like, <laughs> oh, oh, a word? Oh, oh, a oh, word? Tori, Tori Boy, like, they be on me like white on rice, Kiana, like, like, I, I had my friend say to me, I'm telling you, this brought tears to my eyes. So I'm on the, I'm, you know, we're just talking. She says, why don't you have your own talk show? She said, because I know you're supposed to have it. I know you're supposed to have it. <laughs> and I just started crying because that was always a dream of mine. And I've been approached so many times and I've poo pooed it away or it wasn't mm. the right time and da da da. But she spoke to that dream that I had kept deep within. And I just wanted to, to let her know she's not letting it go this year. Mm. She said, you, she said, when you come on the screen, you radiate. You have a lot to offer the world. So I want to shout out to Kiana for that. I want to shout out to all the people I named because when I tell you they hold my feet to the fire, they are my accountability people. Mm. The kind that don't play with me. Were you, the kind were you that ever, will show up at your house and be like. Precious, were you ever the type of person who wanted to do it on your own? And if you were, how did you, how did you transfer? Well, yeah, to, I, still feel, I still have those tendencies at times. Yeah, yeah. let's just be real. Let's really be real. <laughs> Let's really be real. A lot of times I want to do things on my own. And yeah. then I'll have someone like my friend Precious Frazier who'll be like, I'm sorry, who, who do you think you are? <laughs> you can get to somewhere by yourself. She's going to get faster and further with mm. others. Yeah. So let's play some games. So let's, let's not play that game. So I like to do, do things, you know, alone. And then I, and I'm an extrovert. Let's, let's not get it twisted. I am an extrovert. Mm -hmm. But when I get into like creating, I like to just do it in a silo, like yep. by myself and yep. just you know, like do my thing. But the greatest, the great thing that I've learned is put your dream out there. Force people to hold you accountable. Yep. Force them. Yep. Put it out there. I, you know, I can say today, I'm going to be a syndicated talk show host. People going to be like, I'll be like, oh, so you doubt my track record? Oh, let me drop it. Let me drop these T's. Catch it. As Al <laughs> says, catch these T's. Catch these T's. Catch these T's. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, this year I'm going to have Two bad bitches and power pitches, the live events, three day events that's happening this year. Shout out to Daniel Jervy. Um, I'm going to uh, so I'm gonna get three, I'm gonna have three to four, three speaking engagements each month paid. Yeah, catch these teas, out to these. Mm. Um, mm. So yes, there are things that I have planned this year, and I want people to hold my feet to the fire because you think I can't do it. Watch this. <laughs> What about what about the next decade, Precious? What what are you creating? Oh my God, Danielle just had us do this. Danielle just had us do this. So the next ten years, you know what? I I I'm, I'm kind of like my cousin. So my cousin, he is he's like a little man whore. I'll put him out there on the street. <laughs> and uh, when he bought his own house, he for the first time he couldn't get kicked out of anybody's house. So what I've always envisioned is having a penthouse apart a penthouse mm. apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Mm. I've also thought of other places because you know what? I have never really had a home home of my own. I've always, you know, you know, I, I live alone, but like I, I've never really had that of my own. Mm. I want to be able to take vacations where, where I'm not bringing work with me. I want to mm. actually, like when I go for speaking engagements internationally or nationally, I'm there on business. Yeah. And shout out, that's a beautiful thing because I get to live my dream when yep. I do it. Mm. But I want to travel and I want to take my girls on a yacht to the Greek Isle of Scorpios yep. for a month or three and just tell them this is what we're going to do. Don't, don't give me no kids. Don't give me no husband. Bring <laughs> yourself the lobster, crab, shrimp, all that's going to be included. You come, no money. It's all bring your bring your bathing suits, bring your bikinis. I don't care if you got extra weight. So do I. We're going to show it all off. I want to have a pitching 
like a pitching school where people yeah. become certified to be pitch masters. You've mm-hmm. been trained by the very best in the world and that is Precious Williams. I want to have a business that survives me and becomes a legacy brand. Something that is, you know, a multi-million dollar operation empire that is a media conglomerate. We're not mm. playing no games in the streets. Mm. Mm. So thank you, Darnell. Shout out. <laughs> I love And that. I also like to have a loving, healthy, happy relationship yeah. with a great man. Yeah. And so if you great men are out there. And you like a a a, a little a little a little curvy girl wonder who's oh, yeah. about that life? Oh yeah, I'll let you girl. I'll let you girl. <laughs> you're no you're king. Tees, no struggle tees. Though. No struggle tees. No struggle tees. <laughs> Your king is out there, just like you I'm are. The, are the looking queen. like oh, that's a handful right there. <laughs> I love it. This is this is so powerful. Um, I want to talk about when you share your message with media. I think that's a lot of people who tune in today. They are um, podcasters, authors, speakers, coaches. People want to get their message out as well. How do you approach catching the media's attention and other podcasters, other platforms, so that they want to bring you in to have you share with their their network? So that's a very good question, and I'm very I'm very very blessed that a lot of people come to me now. But in the beginning, I really wrote down a list hmm. of the places that I wanted to be featured. What I could, and not just you know, so they could feature me, but hmm. what could I? What, what value could I add to their audience? What value could I add to their audience? Because it can't be just bad bitches and power pitches. <laughs> by my, you know what I mean? It had that's, to be that's what about opens what the I, conversation. What I offer? <laughs> you like, by my, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It had to be about how does what I do impact or attract your, 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 your audience mm-hmm. and they learn something? Thing, or they mm-hmm. grasp something or it's something new and fresh and different in the marketplace. So you have to go in with that, with that, with that idea. Cause everybody who writes a book wants to be featured. Everyone who has a business wants to be featured, yeah. but what do you do that adds value to their audience? You mm-hmm. have to be able to quantify and qualify that. You have to be able to articulate why you pick that particular um, media brand. Why did you do that? Like, so this morning when I was up, I'll even give you an example. So I was looking for, different booking producers for, you know, the top, the, you know, everything from the Today Show to CNN to Cheddar to stuff like that. So I went specifically looking for certain things. And then I crafted a pitch that was for different types of of media, sure. you know you know what I mean? And so I just put it out there. And I, oh, the reason why I sent in my Forbes article is because I wanted to validate who I am. Mm. That if I can get in the Forbes, I'm not anything to play with. Mm. If I can get on Shark Tank, I'm nothing to play with. Mm. And I will entertain and engage your audience. So let's be clear. I'm going to come and I'm going to bring it. Nope. This right here may open the door, yeah. but I'm going to tear the roof off as your guest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. What? What? Is there any platforms that you like haven't gotten on that you want to get on? Have like? I, th- I would love to be on the Today Show. Good yeah. morning, America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would love to be those things. I would love. I would love. I would love to be on Sister Circle. Mm. I would love to be on the Tamron Hall show. I would love to be on those really big shows with really big platforms to speak to women, mm. to speak to primarily women. Why? Because I know that I'm going to bring something new to the table. Like I'm going to teach about pitching, branding, and public speaking in a very unique way. Owning your space, really talking from a sense of power and a sense of value and a sense of worth. And I had to do that with a title that totally screams mm. that I am not, I have audacity and I have the audacity to go face you. I have the audacity to ask for the opportunity and I have the intention that it's going to happen this year. This is my 41st year on this earth. People tell women who are over a certain age that you're over with, you're done, you're this, you're that. Oh, no. Let me tell you something. It's just begun. You know, I now, I now can, I, can, I now can look, look at Oprah, even though we're in different generations, and I feel this sense of no BS, no BS. I'm not here to fluff you. I'm not, I'm not PT Barnum, but maybe I'm the black chocolate curvy version of PT Barnum. <laughs> but what I'm saying is. No BS. I'm coming correct. I'm gonna come mm. correct. I'm gonna give you energy. I'm gonna give you intensity. I'm gonna give value. I'm gonna give you. I'm just gonna give it to you. Like today, I'm sure you didn't know my personality would show up like this. Like, <laughs> like, oh, she'll be all right. She'll be all right. I, 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 I,
the, you planted those seeds in in the pre-interview call. I was like, okay, what are we what are we gonna do here? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> We're gonna unleash. No, I, I knew that. Like, just seeing your branding, seeing you know, just what you put out into the world. It's it's audacious. It's energy. It's like powerful. And I think that's that's not necessarily everyone's brand, but for you, it, it just like rocks. And for those people who resonate with that, like, be unapologetic in that expression, in that creation, in that delivery consistently over time. And I think that's what gets you noticed. That's what you know yes. builds the following, builds the people who are like. You you know what precious keeps showing up she just keeps giving that massive value she keeps putting out this fire and like she is no holds barred audacious and i think that builds the brand that's that's what's going to get you onto these different platforms and allow you to impact even more people you have to be willing to stand out and if you're one of those people that wants everybody to like you this ain't for you i'm here to tell you this ain't for you this ain't for you mm. Mm. if you want to mm. stand out this ain't for you <laughs> Thank so, you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to tell you because you're gonna have people who come out of the woodworks who tell you you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not this, you're not that. And I'm here to tell you, all, even if all of that were true, mm. you know my name. I don't know yours. Mm. Mm. So with this this message that you're getting out to the world, I want to know for the people who um, don't yet have a platform, they're not yet like reaching all the people that they want to reach. Like, like, I, like I used to, like 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 what I used to be. <laughs> exactly. Okay, what I do people do? Sure. <laughs> but I, think I always had it. I did. <laughs> what do people do if they're starting out at that position and not having a platform? I would suggest getting a great coach or getting or going to your local business library and getting started with goal setting, goal yeah. creation and planning out some parts of your your business journey, right? Okay. Yeah. Very few people are not me who um very few people can get on national television with no real business. I get that. <laughs> but you'd be very surprised at where you can get with a mm. great pitch. Mm. Yes, I got on national television, international television. Yes, I did all those sort of things. But you need to have someone who's going to hold your foot to the fire. I'm going to keep saying that. You need to have an accountability buddy. Mm. You need to have your your friends that will challenge you and will will force you to do either do your business or or or, or start working your nine your nine to nine. Because mm. I don't know anybody who's nine to five. Mm. Like you either with your dream or you're with somebody else's. Yeah. Your choice. Mm. So you need to have people who will help you along the way. I am the pitch master, but I'm not a graphic designer. Hmm. Neither am I a financial advisor. I own my zone of genius. Yeah. Own your zone of genius. If you know you need to get certifications, get up on that. If you know you need to get certain training, get up on that. At the same time, start with now. That's right. I think they would say the power of now. Start now. Yeah, that's right. It's 2020. Best, best year, best decade to get started in the now i love it i want to i want to talk about um with with your message getting this out to the world like how can people work with you how can what are the different ways that they can get involved obviously there's there's your book heck yes what what ways can they uh work with you what are the different ways they can grow with you so there are different ways that you can grow with me so of course you know if you if you want to just you know get some understanding of who i am and you know Pitching overall, you can get the Bad Bitches and Power Pitches book on Amazon. I, I promise you it's the only Bad Bitches and Power Pitches book on Amazon. There's no <laughs> one else named Precious Williams on Amazon who's written that book. Number two, you can go to my you can you can work with me in group coaching. So if you want to work together with a group, I have uh the killer pitch um, elevation mode. And okay. that that way we're all working together as a group. Sometimes people need community. Sometimes people really, really need a community in which you're learning from me, but you're also learning from the community around you. Mm. Another way you can work with me is if you need one offs, like if you need a pitch written for you, but you don't need so much coaching, you just need, you know, a couple of times of us meeting and I'm creating the pitch for you. We rehearse a couple of times. You can do the killer pitch and introduction. Mm. If you're someone who's struggling to try to get a speaking engagement or pay speaking engagements or just engagements, period, mm. you can take my master class, which is. Hashtag speaking gigs galore or hashtag book and busy. So let me just let me just say that slower because I, I think I ran through that right too fast. <laughs> there's my group coaching. Like if you want to work with me, there's group coaching, the killer pitch. Uh, I think it's called the killer pitch elevation mode. Then you have if you're a speaker and you want speaking engagements, whether they're free, paid, or to learn how to speak at all, then you have my speaking gigs galore masterclass, 
or my hashtag booked and busy masterclass. And then you have my book. And then if you just want one off, like Precious, just create pitches for me. You can just send me uh, an email at Precious at Perfect Pitches by Precious. And I can just write elevator pitches or nothing for me. I can just get up <laughs> on that quick, fast, and in a hurry. Like you ain't even worried about it. We ain't got to talk too long. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> and I am Precious Williams on LinkedIn. I'm the, yeah. I'm the only one who just pops up under just Precious Williams. And my name is spelled like it is in a dictionary. Um, on Facebook, I'm Perfect Pitch P. That's on, that's for my business page, slash Perfect Pitch P. Okay. On Instagram, I am Perfect Pitches P. On Twitter, I'm Perfect Pitch P. And um, let's see, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And my email address is precious at perfect pitches by precious.com. And my website is www.perfectpitchesbyprecious.com. Oh my gosh. Precious, this has been an absolute blast for everyone who's listening, watching live or replay. Get the show notes. Go freaking connect with Precious. Get her book. I just I love the title of it. <laughs> this like so awesome. <laughs> it's catchy and just like dive in deep to your pitch so that you can master that. So you can open up the door. So you can um, close the relationship. So you can open into relationships and clients and all these opportunities that Precious has gotten a hold of. And this is just the beginning. So Precious, I want to I bring it home with a final takeaway. What do you want our audience to know, to take action on, and to do in 2020? What is it? So in 2020, I want you to have your word or words that you're going to live by, live and die mm. by. They're going to they're gonna be the reason why you take an offer or you don't take an offer. Number two, if you know you need help with speaking and pitching, check out your girl, perfectpitchesbyprecious.com. Number three, don't stay down. You can feel your emotions. You can feel down. But get around a great support network. Get around your people and force them to help you get out of it. Don't let isolation be your friend. It's not going to be your friend. It's going to be it's your enemy. And number four, dream big, but take action. It's not enough to just dream it. You have to take massive action. And then you can do the little steps. But until you take that massive step, which means that I'm going after that person and don't let people get you into the zone where it has to be the perfect step. No, I reached out to people on LinkedIn and I don't care that they are in second c c connection. I don't mm -hmm. care that somebody would tell me that they're out of my league. No one's out of my league mm -hmm. under God's nobody. So you can do it. Take that massive action and then do the little steps. Precious, you are on fire, girl. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And uh, just everything that you're blessing us with, you're blessing your tribe and all the people who you reach. Just keep up the amazing work. You are, you are on fire. You're amazing. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your platform. I hope that this was a great experience for you. Now you know, like, you know, you can bring me back a couple more times. Oh, you know, it, you know it. You know it. You know how we do. You know, Precious is always going to ask. I'm never the empire, gonna die. the empire oh, is building. Guess. We're we're building the yes. empire. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Precious. We'll see you soon. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care.